Yeah. Screen printing can be a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I've spent many frustrating afternoons in that room for I'm sure. sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Definitely. <laughs> so what's up, guys? We're back to Hivewire Podcast. Good to see you. Um, we're here with Sean Cronin today. How you doing? So what's up, man? How's your day so far? It's good. Nice. Doing good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hot. <laughs> oh yeah. You know what? I've been like, <clears throat> I've been like ripping out a floor in this, like a, uh, uh, mobile home in Groton for the past week, and oh, it's no. like been like 110 degrees in the mobile home. Yeah. So like I've. I felt like I needed to wear a hoodie today, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think I've sweat out all the sweat from all the people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, for, yeah. In seriously. like in the past week. Yeah, I've taken showers and I'm like, I get out and I'm still wet. Yeah, I just like can't dry off. Dingy and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's nice though. I yeah. mean, we were waiting for it, you know. I know. I'm waiting for fall. Yeah, right. <laughs> shit. Fall. Fall in New England is the best. It man. is. It's I love seriously it. the best time ever. Yeah. So where'd you grow up? Uh, Hamden, Connecticut, yes. which is just outside of New Haven. So, yeah, I grew up there um, and grew up, like, skating downtown New Haven as a, as a little kid. That's like, sick, man. Yeah, from, like, seventh grade on, yeah. Yeah, there's some spots down there. Yeah, there's a lot of spots. It's sick. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice, like, terrain. It's a nice, like, atmosphere and stuff. I like yeah. Beinecke and shit. There's yeah, Beinecke was, like, that was the first place that we would skate. Yeah. Yeah, and we used to skate there. You used to be able to skate there back then. Yeah, yeah, it's like, a good they had, zone. They had, like, students, like, camping out, fighting apartheid there. And so they would have, like, they had all the, they had, like, a shanty town built. No shit. In the whole, the whole quad was a big shanty town to fight apartheid to get Yale to divest and so you could skate there because there was always like hundreds of students around damn that's and, sick and the cops like had better things to do than to worry about us so like for years we were able to skate that's really tight yeah, what, what then, time period was that was that like occupy wall street time like no this 2008 back, type shit no this is back in like 1980 oh hell yeah let's <laughs> it was go a long, it was a long time <laughs> yeah ago. dude yeah. yeah fuck yeah up until like 1990 and then they got rid of the shanty town and then they started cracking down damn yeah you hate to see it yeah they gentrified the spot and shit yeah yeah fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when'd you get into photography man uh around that same time so probably like seventh seventh grade sixth grade that's um, sick yeah started early that's dope yeah my grandfather always like had a camera and was always taking pictures of people that's really and so cool. i like borrowed my my parents camera and uh started making a zine when i was in seventh grade that's sick what was it called rage sick yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. there you go yeah and then slowly like started finding other people's addresses through like like thrasher every once in a while would like publish like zines and they'd have like zine reviews and they'd have addresses so then i'd write the address down and like mail it off to to whoever and then hopefully get a zine so that's how i ended up starting getting like corresponding with like people like todd swank and uh andy jenkins and uh, just a whole bunch of dudes uh dan esterbrook um just people from all over the all over the world basically that's sick man yeah. that's that's really cool so i was like i was like pen pals with todd swank when i was like in a freshman in high school and he was like kind of a pro and like working at trans world and like so we were like sending each other zines and letters from back then and then that's how I ended up getting a job at Tomietto at one point, like years later. That's know? sick. And you worked at Tomietto. How long did you work there for? It was like almost four years, I think. That's like sick, until dude. Until 2004. Yeah. That's tight. I mean, everything they do is gold. Really sick. Yeah, it was a it was a great period. Cause yeah. It was like right when Corey Duffel got on and like um, I discovered Leo like skating one time. Damn. Yeah. That's really sick. Yeah. He's still killing it. I know. I know. That's I was just, I was dope, just on a trip with them like uh, a month ago. They were out here. So. Yeah, and Julian and yeah, 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 yeah dude. Yeah. That's so, so sick, just out dude. With them for like that week. Yeah, she Foundation was... has such a squad right now, dude. It's yeah, that's that's tight, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's so crazy. Leo was just like an unknown. He was just he was uh, Austin Stevens, like just friend. Yeah. And I had went to go shoot a pig out of Austin and on this rail and Austin didn't want to skate the rail. And Leo was like, Oh, I'll just like warm up with you. And then Leo did like every trick on the rail, like first try. And I was like, 
who is this kid? No fucking shit. Yeah, That's he so was sick. Like, he was 15, and I was like, dude, do you have a sponsor me tape? And he's like, yeah. And I gave him the FedEx number for Tom Yetto, and was like, FedEx it to us tomorrow. Damn. And then, and then, like, the, then two days later, he was on the team. Really? And then a week later, we were like going to Europe with him. That's so crazy, cause yeah. like nowadays, like you can get your like information in front of companies so easily and stuff. Like you really yeah. had to put in some effort back then. You yeah, know he had I mean? to go home. He had like a tape that he had to like then go to a UPS, like a FedEx place, and put it in a box. And hopefully, it didn't get broken right, and stuff. And overnight it to us and hope that one of somebody's gonna watch it. And That's so tight. Yeah, it was sick. So <laughs> I wanted to dial back a little bit. Yeah. You you said your the first camera setup you got was from your parents. What what camera was that? Uh, it was like a old Mamiya Secor. It was like a 35 millimeter, like random camera. No shit. Yeah, and then um, through Zines, I actually met this guy Adam um, Adam Cook that actually lives in Groton, or he lived in Groton at the time, and so we became pen pals too, like you know, freshman in high school. Um, and so we would write to each other because like you still had to call long distance back then mm -hmm. so it was like yeah cost money, oh yeah big time right so like we would write to each other but he had a fisheye adapter that he had gotten for a video camera and he got all these adapter rings and put it onto his like regular lens and so he had like this kind of messed up fisheye lens and so he told me how to do it and so i did that and then i had this like ghetto like fisheye lens you know, and that's, then, like that's, and that's sick, how I dude. learned. That's how I started taking fisheye photos, and then like I got the big like mashed potato flash thing. Yeah, yeah. But that was only through like just looking at magazines and like looking back then they had contests, and so there'd be photographers on tops of the vert ramps, mm -hmm. and you could see the cameras, and so I'd get like a magnifying glass and like no look shit, and try dude. to see like what kind of flash they were using and all that stuff, and so I figured it out, and then went to the city and bought this big flash and then started learning how to use that that's so sick man yeah, yeah dude but like, back then had like, to do you, the investigations dude yeah there was no like there was no internet like there were no real books on like how to be a skate photographer there was like you couldn't like i guess i could have just called up somebody at like thrasher or trans world wrote but, a letter like, or something yeah but like you know i was like 14 Right. It never occurred to me that I could like just call up Grant and be like, "Hey, dude, what kind of flash is that?" Yeah, and part he would have been like, "Yeah, it's totally like this flash." And, you know. Did you ever like have that feeling that part of, like, like party is like, mm, I don't know, they're gonna give out the secrets and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, get, yeah. There was partly the that. Sauce, there was part you know? of that too. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't think, but now like obviously like knowing them and everything and what I've been through like. Yeah, they totally would have told me. Like, <laughs> so do you um do you like prefer fisheye or long lens? Depends on the trick. I like long of course. lens better. Yeah. Yeah. I like being creative with long lens. Get more of like, the scenery and stuff. Yeah, and I like hiding things and like so getting like stuff out of focus and like I try to think graphically about like how um an art director is gonna lay out the photo. Like mm -hmm. back when they were laying out magazines all the time, you had to like account for type and and all that stuff and so i would like try to like make my long lens photos so that they could like put type in the blurred blurred out part mm. you know? uh ted newsom who was an art director at trans world for a, a long time kind of taught me that he was like make it he was like shoot the photo so that i have to use the entire photo he was like make it so i can't crop it mm. that was like his advice because then he was like, because then you're going to get paid more money. Hmm. And then he was also like, don't ever shoot in black and white because you get paid less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, always shoot in color and always make it so I have to do a two-page spread. Yeah, right? <laughs> you and know? you want it to be bright and vibrant. Right, you yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, at that point, it was just about, like, money. Yeah. It was about making more money. That's sick, um, man. That's, and so he, that's crazy. he told me a bunch of secrets like that. So I, I'm always, like, thinking about, like, how the photos will get laid out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's so much. I mean, like, I know nothing about, like, photography, but I'm sure there's so much technical type of stuff with that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Now now you, you've got programs like uh, Capture One where mm -hmm. you can, like, you, you can shoot tethered to the computer and um, you can put, like, you can put an overlay in the, into the program, like, which is basically, like, so if you're shooting an ad, you can have basically the ad laid out and like you can shoot the photo and then you can see how it's going to look 
Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like right there on the computer. That's sick. Like so, it's all done. Yeah. So like art directors are just can just stand there and be like, okay, a little to the left, a little to the right. So like, convenient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas back then you didn't have any of that. So, um, what was the first photo you took that you that uh, got ran into Mag? Um, I think it was a black label ad um, of Tim Upson. Yeah. He, he had just turned pro and he needed a an ad. Um, and I was the only one that he knew that had a camera and it was, yeah, it was like January and he, he was like, I need a photo for an ad. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> That's and so he like went out at night and it was freezing cold. Oh, I bet. It was like, you know, like, what was he doing? What was the trick? Uh, it was a back tail on a Jersey barrier. There was like this tiny little bank thing with a Jersey barrier downtown New Haven. And, Hell yeah. And it had ice that he had to like roll through. So he had to like roll through this ice and kind of he kind of like skidded up and then into a back tail and then hell yeah and I didn't know what I was doing so I was you know it was in the dark I'm like shooting this foot and I'm like I think I got it I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's so sick how hyped were you when they were like yeah we're running that like hell I was yeah. psyched fuck yeah yeah I was I was super psyched and then you you saw it in person hard copy you're like uh, oh, it took yeah. a while um, yeah it took a while how long couple months yeah probably like three months you're just crossing your fingers like oh i want to see that i actually kind of forgot about it really well because i wasn't like because i was just going to college and like i just shot that photo it wasn't like i was like making a living doing it so um i think i just kind of just didn't think about it yeah and then i don't even think i saw the photo i don't even think the magazine came out yet and then jake phelps called me from thrasher no shit yeah that's sick. And I remember like being home. My mom was like, "Oh, this guy Jake from Thrashers on the phone." And I was like, "What?" And you know, this was before he was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jake. like, like he everybody knew like, who he, he was. was." Like, I mean, I knew who he was, but he wasn't like bigger than life, Jake, at this mm -hmm. point. And he was like, "When are you going to send me some photos?" You know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that sounds. I was gonna ask you, what did he say? Yeah, That's I was like, exactly. I was what, like, yeah. what? I was like, who is this? You know, he's like, it's Phelps. He's like, when are you sending me photos? He's like, you're sending photos to Lucero. He's like, send the photos to me. And I was like, um, oh, okay. And then he like, he like just handed the phone to somebody. I think it was a secretary or something. And she gave me the address, and then she took my address. And then so I like just put a put a ton of photos into like into a folder and just FedExed them to him. No shit. Yeah. And then like Straight I think it was copy. like it was like three days three or four days later, this enormous box showed up at my parents' house. And it was like it was just filled with Thrasher sweatshirts and T shirts and uh magazines and then just bricks and bricks and bricks of film and like boxes of like double a batteries and stuff i was like what? damn what the dude the kit <laughs> dude like, <laughs> you got the care package on. yeah I had that's no idea. so sick dude and to have them back you like that and like motivate but you i didn't even know like, i didn't even more i didn't even do anything like i never even sent him a photo no shit like it was because i guess like phelps was talking called lucero and was like who shot this photo and he was like oh sean cronin you know and he was like give me his number and then that's how it, like so I never even like called him. Damn, that's I never even tight. sent him anything. It was just he just saw that photo and he loved Upson. That's crazy. So he was like, after... well, if he could shoot Upson, then he could shoot anybody. So then it was like, then it was on. That's so sick, man. And... Especially like after all the, like the pen pal stuff and yeah, like yeah. going like the extra mile like that to have that just click like that. Yeah, it was awesome. That is tight. Yeah, and then the, I think it was then the, the I think the issue finally came out with his ad, and then I think it was the next issue. Like they used practically everything that I sent. It was I had like I don't know forty photos in one in the first issue or something, and oh, I had shit. like I had the the gatefold spread like the poster, which was this dude Todd Lucier who's the shark, and that's where the term hammers comes from. Mm. Is um, I think the caption was something like Todd Lucier putting a hammer down on a back fifty, um, <clears throat> and it was like right outside of Grand Central, and. Greco, 
at the time was like this little kid and he was like super annoying and he saw that and he was like hammers putting a hammer down putting a hammer down Love putting it. a hammer down and he was like hammers hammers and that's all he would say and that's how hammers came house about. of hammers and stuff that's yeah so that's how that's how like that came about was from that caption from that photo that i had shot that's really funny yeah, so like so phelps inadvertently like made the hammers but it was mostly greco so it's crazy just like looking at the photo and jim would like carry that photo around with him he would have it like folded up in his pocket and every once in a while he'd like pull it out and he'd be like yeah hammers <laughs> <laughs> that's so like, sick he was nuts dude. um you filmed you uh took a lot of photos with with uh greco yeah back in the day that's yeah. sick yeah i shot like his first photos in the mag no shit yeah um it was actually in that um that china banks thing and mm -hmm. thrasher did you see that like web thing that they did about China banks? Uh, semi recently. <laughs> yeah, like a couple weeks. I ago. think I I think I might have brushed by it. So they've got like two of the photos that I shot there. Right no now. shit, that's yeah. so sick. With no photo credit, of course. <laughs> Goddamn. Goddamn. <laughs> but yeah, that yeah, he's like doing a backside ollie at China banks, and that's like his first photo on a mag. That's sick. Yeah. Um, when we moved into this is this is actually kind of a funny story. When we moved into this building. We were uh, taking out, like, a bunch of stuff that had been left here from, like, the 90s and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there was a magazine that had an an interview with Jim Greco in it. It was a porno mag. Oh, and yeah. it had a, a two-page <laughs> interview with him in it. And, like, the quotables that are from that, like, it's the funniest oh, shit God, ever. Oh, so funny. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Um, What a legend, dude. Yeah, at that point, like, he had – um, I think he was, like – he had been on World and – I don't know what happened, but I think he, like, went off with Klein to do, like, hookups. Hook Klein was starting to do hookups, and so he did that. And um, Jim had this, like, little lawn ramp. It was, like, this big. It was only, like, a foot tall, and it was painted like a pizza slice. So we just called it the slice. And mm -hmm. so, like, he couldn't drive, so we would just have the slice, like, hanging out of the back of my car, and we would just, like, drive around, and he would, like, just try to find stuff to, like, ollie up onto. That's sick. Yeah. So no he would, shit. like, he would like set the slice up at the bottom of, like, a 12-stair and just, like, ollie up the 12-stair. No shit. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that kind of, like, it seems like that's, like, the, like, uh, the start to, like, you know, the, the, the sequence in the end. Yeah, with yeah. Jeremy Clint, where they're hitting all the yeah, like, yeah, blockbusters. Yeah, kind of so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's so sick. Yeah, dude. because then I would like send, <clears throat> excuse me, Klein receipts for like driving around all the time, mm -hmm. because I was like driving around to slice. So he would like pay me to like drive Jim around. That's so sick. Yeah, and then <laughs> there was this one. There's this one street in New Haven uh, called Audubon Street, and Jim ollied it like he set up the slice and then just like <laughs> sailed across yeah that's it was so like sick. a it was like a centerfold thing in thrasher at one point it was crazy that's sick dude wow um so you said you you um worked for tomietto for four years <coughs> yeah. um who else did you work for uh so it was trans world thrasher and big brother i was on like retainer with them oh big brother All damn them. legendary yeah that was crazy. nice it was yeah. fun yeah, yeah, yeah i was like the kind of normal dude yeah with like all I, the I, antics going on in the background and shit yeah i mean I, I wasn't i wasn't like in the office or anything okay so like my job was to just be like the skate photographer mm -hmm. you know and so i was just on trips and they never knew where i was like i had a credit card and i would just every month just send like a fedex box of, of film and that was it and, That's then, sick. and then like if it was a trip or something narako would just like call me up and kind of just talk with me but he would record me and then, then he would just, they would just transcribe it. And that was, that was the tour article. Um, so they never knew where I was. They never knew what I was doing. No shit. It, it was sounds awesome. like some big brother shit right yeah, there. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's fucking dope, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I got like a cover there and they'd moved the skater and they left a wheel like floating. I don't know if you ever heard about that. Mm -mm. But, uh, Markovich, we shot this photo of Chris Markovich. Um, it's a front side ollie and it's my first cover i find out that i got it and then everybody's calling me be like dude are you so pissed and i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about because i hadn't even seen it and uh that's you it turns out um turns out that like jeff tremaine the art director at the time uh didn't like his positioning so he moved him over to like make room for the words mm-hmm 
but didn't move them higher, just like moved them over like an inch and then just forgot a wheel. So there's just a wheel floating in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, dude. I love that. <laughs> and, like he almost quit over it. Like, cause really? people were freaking out. Oh, you people know? were salty about it. Huh? Everybody was really upset because Damn. people then were like, wait a minute, like they can move people around and, Oh they yeah, can do that with Photoshop because you got to remember, like Photoshop wasn't a thing really back then. Yeah, I wanted to. Nobody I want... had Photoshop, so it was like right. they didn't. Nobody knew that you could do that, and yeah, yeah so that I... happened all the time. I wanted to ask you about that. Like, do you prefer shooting with film, or do you think? Do you feel like the, no, the new digital? Film. Yeah, you feel like it's a little too much. All the digital stuff's a little bit easier. It's so much easier. Yeah. I mean, you know, we would go on trips to, we'd go to Europe for like a month. And so I would have to pack enough film for a month. Oh, yeah. And you're paying for another and bag a, and, and shit. Pro, <laughs> and I'm a pro skateboard photographer. So I'm like, I'm shooting a shit ton of film every yeah. day. And we're going to contests. So, like, I would pack, like, a duffel bag that would be full, completely full of film and batteries. And then, you know, you can't, you can't carry it on because it's mm-hmm. a huge double bag. yeah so absolutely. i'm like checking it you know shit and like carrying another bag with film you know <clears throat> so like i would bring like huge bags of film yeah nowadays you're just like oh, nowadays couple memory just, cards whatever yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's like i yeah i hate film yeah you know how some people are kind of <laughs> like purists and stuff and they're like oh well, yeah, you should do the yeah. old way or whatever you know right. what i mean or or they like the kind of like uh why some people like like choose to have a record player or something like, yeah, oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, no, the... I totally get that I mean, it's, that's fine but like those people aren't the ones that are like actually making a living yeah totally doing it yeah. like it was my job so I had to bring enough film because if you were in France on a Sunday and you ran out of film there's nothing open right you can't even you can barely even find a restaurant that's open Damn. you know like especially back then there'd be nothing open even on Saturdays you wouldn't be able to find anything open Shit. so it was like to find film like you were you're screwed yeah you're not hitting amazon and being like oh send it to my no there was no <laughs> way to get any film so you would have to so like so i understand that like there are people like oh i love film you know and it's like but they just take their like out and they shoot like two frames yeah yeah, they're yeah. walking around new york they're, they're not, doing it they're as a hobby literally lugging you know 50 pound duffel bag of film through totally. an airport like <laughs> yeah dude you know wow man so you really went through the trenches man that's sick dude like all the in an all era the where you really had then, to put it yeah, in that's all the dudes did that's dope dude. the filmers too i mean the filmers had to bring tapes like they would bring our rb would bring like boxes and boxes and boxes of tapes yeah you know because you just needed to have all this stuff mm-hmm. yeah damn that's so sick dude yeah that's yeah that's so dope it's, really it's having considerably to put in the easier now yeah like now sure. it's like my bag is like this big it's like small yeah yeah, yeah. just a carry-on now yeah there you go yeah fuck yeah <laughs> so um did you mention you you worked for zoo for a while yeah yeah like, yeah 14 years that's sick dude that's dope <laughs> Yeah. Good time period and it stuff. Was awesome, yeah. I heard that they're trying to like <clears throat> that some of the um, OG dudes were trying to like bring it back to life. Um, yeah, I don't so, really know what's going on. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm out of that loop. I mean, yeah, you know, it's, it's not owned by them, so it's not like, right. Yeah, yeah, iconic company though, man. Really sick, dude. It was awesome. I mean, we had yeah, it was great. Like I started right when um, Mark Echo bought them. Yeah. And they brought over like Welsh, Welsh and uh, Donnie and Kenny Hughes and everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, that was awesome. It was it was so much fun. That's sick, man. Yeah, everybody got paid a lot. Like we traveled yeah. everywhere. Um, got to do whatever we wanted. It was awesome. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and basically for fourteen years, it was just like traveling and just having a great time. It's so sick. <clears throat> Who do you think your favorite um, like skater was to like to work with? You know. <sighs> Uh, I don't know. I got a lot. Westgate probably is the easiest. Yeah, so yeah. consistent, dude. Yeah, Westgate and Leo. Big pops, dude. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's sick, dude. Westgate and Leo probably. Uh, Corey, Corey Duffel was rad to work with. That's uh, sick. Yeah, um, I like working. Yeah, with my friends too. You know. Yeah. Um, but 
So you mentioned I was going to ask you if you still go on trips and stuff and yeah. still get it in. You were saying you're were, yeah. you're with Foundation Boys and stuff working yeah. Yeah. recently. That's really sick, man. Yeah, it was awesome. Still getting it, dude. That's so sick. Yeah, I love it. I'm like, yeah, I, I everywhere every time I go anywhere, I'm like just constantly looking like, oh, it's that spot. That's yeah, like, right. That spot like. I think that's like after you've been skating long enough. That's like, like a it's like how a dog it. like watches for the door yeah, yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, you're just yeah. like always looking at something. Like is this? Is this yeah, I'm always. Can this doing be that. skated? Yep. I'm yeah. constantly like, oh, let's. My girlfriend it drives me nuts. I'm like, oh, let's go around this building. You know? Like, <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what was that? She's like, oh, did you see something? You're like, yeah. And I think my ex wife too. I think she I was used like twelve to drive over her there. Bananas, but she knew like. She was totally down, but she was just like, this is like ridiculous. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. so funny, man. Yeah. So, um, so if out of all the photos that you took, do you think that there's one that stands out as like the one you're most proud of? Most proud of? Uh... Or like you liked the most or you enjoyed shooting the most, you know what I mean? Something that just like stands out in your memory. I mean, the one that always stands out is the Markovich photo. That got the wheel, up. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but everybody thinks I did it, and I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even know how to use Photoshop at that time. Right. You know? and, and I'm sure that's just, like, such, like, a, like, people are like, oh, it's so sacrilegious to, like, edit, like, the position of the skater and stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I've, that's seen like, it. I've seen it done so much. Because it's, like, really, like, that's, like, most of the workings of the, yeah. like, you don't want the right thing. You know how some people will be like, oh, you want to, like, hide certain aspects of the photo so you're like how the fuck did he do this where is he going yeah. type of stuff but yeah. if you're just like oh yeah just zip over there like, yeah 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 i'm sure there's a lot of people that that would rub the wrong way yeah a lot of people would be pissed if they knew actually what happens behind yeah. the scenes it happens more than you think really <clears throat> Shit. yeah damn um and then uh <coughs> excuse me like i i know like uh if if you go, like there was a time period when there's there was um photos that made it into mags that weren't makes yeah. Something like that. Yeah, like, that happened all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, the make. Everybody, like, every photographer has had that happen. I mean, there's not really a lot you can do. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there's a couple ways to look at it, I'm sure. Like, and if you're, like, thinking of it as an art form and stuff like that, you're delivering in that aspect and stuff. And it's, like, all open to interpretation and shit. And, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, people are going to get mad either ways. You know? It's certain true. Certain things. So. Yeah, it's true. What and a, a lot of times, like, stuff, like... It was like an almost make, or it's like, oh, we're going to go back. Yeah. But then we just don't. Or, <laughs> you, or you go back and, and it's gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and man. The spot's gone. It's like, ah, oh, shit. Like, well, photo already ran. Like, <laughs> damn. You know what I mean? And it's not like even the photographer. It's, you know, it's usually like, I mean, if you're working for a company, then you've got bosses and you've got, bo you know, other bosses that sure. are like, we need, like, you, we, we spent. A lot, a lot of people don't realize like how expensive it is to for a team to go on a trip. Even, oh yeah, even just oh yeah, even just like sure. five dudes to go to like Atlanta for a weekend. It's like it could be like five grand. Yeah, just look at six, just five, six, seven grand. Yeah, just go on Expedia <clears throat> and look at five airline tickets. Like you're gonna be like, Ey! right, you and, know? and 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 three hotel rooms or two yeah. hotel rooms. You know, like. And like not even eating well, it's just like eating at a Denny's and mm -hmm. Chick Fil A, Shit. and it, and it could be like six, seven grand. And so you come home with like nothing. People are gonna freak out. Oh yeah, big time. You know, but like you come home and you're like, I've got enough to make an article, or we've got enough to make this podcast, or like whatever. Mm -hmm. and then everybody's everybody's happy. So sometimes like a photo might fall through because it's like, oh man, we need you know like somebody didn't get a photo but he almost did this and right. he's gonna go back he wants to go back you know and, and nobody's intentions that are, are ever to be like hey just do this i'm not going back but run it you know what i mean right, i'm yeah, sure no, like no, people no. don't think like that no you know? no i've never had anybody say that yeah real yeah. shit but a lot of people are like no i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back um right those are good dudes them. westgate's For... so sick to watch skate that that yeah. dude's a horse you're like I, I'm like, where does he get that that pop? Is it from the cranberry bogs? Like, I know, right? <laughs> it's crazy, dude. He's always been like that. Too. Yeah, wild man. What yeah. a what a talented dude. Yeah, and that's so sick, man. You've lived a super interesting life, man. It's you been know, fun, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And I I have so much respect for that, like the effort that you put in and the the time period that you were doing it and stuff like that. Like, I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that will like 
look at um, something like photography and really not understand how difficult it, it was and time consuming and expensive that it was. Oh yeah, it was like crazy, yeah. just even twelve years ago. Yeah. You know, yeah, like it's it's tough. It's a hard skill, um, and it's it takes a lot of investment. You know, with time and and, did, yeah. and attention and stuff like and that. Patience. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I and, mean, a roll of film would be like seven bucks to buy <clears throat> if you had to buy it, and then. It'd be like seven bucks to get it developed. Mm -hmm. So it's like 14 bucks. Yeah. And, you know, so if you're shooting stills, that's, that's, that's one thing, you know, but then you still had to wait like a day or two or three or whatever, however many days it took to get the film back. Right. You know, but like shooting sequences, I'd go out and shoot sequences and I'd have like bricks of film. Oh God. Yeah. You shit. know, and a brick is like 20 rolls. Mm -hmm. And so I'd go, there'd be times I'd be going through 50, 60, 80 rolls of film. Damn. Like just taking it, pulling it out, you know, crushing it on the ground, throwing a new one in, Damn. pulling it out, <laughs> you know, like. It's wild, man. <clears throat> yeah. That's so sick. You yeah. know, um, yeah, these uh, young guys out, out here have to really fucking appreciate the, <laughs> appreciate the convenience I that mean, you now, got, yeah, you, you know what like, I'm saying? And then For it's sure. like, it doesn't even matter, you know? Absolutely, <laughs> man. Um, wh who do you think was like the most inspirational photographer for you? Like, do you think that you like, like got a lot of inspiration from anybody in particular or somebody stands out? Uh, Grant Britton for sure. Yeah. Uh, just cause he's like one of the best. Yeah. Um, Spike Jones, mm -hmm. um, was, it's not, just, he always takes like amazing photos. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, God, there was this dude in, um, Bill Thomas was a photographer in New York that like shot a lot of the old like shut dudes back in the day. Oh no shit. Um so he was he was rad. Like his photos were always like super cool to look at. That's dope. Um and then um Dan Sturt was probably like is probably like my favorite. That dude is just gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't know if you know anything about that guy, but he No, I'll show, I'll I'll take a look for he's, sure. He's insane. Like yeah. the photos that he has done are just incredible and he's just nuts yeah like he's done the loop no shit yeah fuck yeah he like he like he's just like totally into like extreme stuff he like wanted to learn how to like dive off a bridge and like land in like a couple feet of water so he like like went and like was like working with like the stunt dude and like figured it out and like he shot a photo of himself like with on film on a huge format big format camera of like him jumping off this bridge in san diego and like landing basically in a couple feet of water jesus like belly flopped in. <laughs> god damn it was the photo right before he hit the water <laughs> no it was like right as he was like leaving the bridge and you can see down it was it's just gnarly that's He's, fucking wild yeah <clears throat> and the rumor is is that like all of his all of his photos like as soon as it got printed he would like burn the negatives no shit. Yeah, you'd like burn everything, just get rid of everything. So. That's crazy. <laughs> that's some that's some strategy right there. Yeah, that's he, wild. Yeah, he's not really. So. That's sick, man. Well, yeah, dude, it's really nice to talk to you today, yeah, man. You like, you like I said, man, you've had such an interesting life, dude. I'd thanks. love to have you back in, and we'll talk some more, dude. Yeah, for sure. Really sick, dude. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Sean, my guy. Nice to meet Hell you. Hell yeah. Yeah, try. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. See ya. That was fun.